This is the closest thing I have to a city. It's nice because it's closer than LA, but also is flawed in that it's just small enough that you'll run into someone you know at least once each visit. Greta, remember me, Chad? Second period English? I got a job at the grocery store now. I could hear him, but that's why I wear the headphones. I need to be in the city to think. It has an electricity to it. An anti-calm, which in itself is a calm. Cars and people flow through it, quick, like blood flowing through our veins. People talk too much. I don't think they even know what they're talking about. We have the profound ability to make symphonies. Fine and abstract art, buildings, cars, spaceships. Yet here I am with Abby, filling gaps of silence with celebrity gossip and uninteresting small talk. I don't know why I sign myself up for these things. Maybe I'm just starved for a good conversation. I need to leave. Your shoe's untied. There aren't many people like Ezra. She's one of those people you're supposed to meet. Like no matter how many alternate universes exist, you somehow know her in each one. It feels like I've known her before, and our souls are just catching up. She asked amazing questions like, who's your favorite poet? Or, which color best describes your mood right now? Of course, thinking of questions like those as often as I do, I had answers ready to go. Anne Sexton and Orange. I don't know why I trusted her so much and so quickly. The way I've described separation anxiety is the way a dog might feel as its human companion leaves the house. They are biologically hardwired to think we are going out to hunt, and they don't know if they'll ever see us again. It's a dangerous world out there after all. And they begin to weep. 